Warning, the following content may contain spoilers for film and television programs. It is also intended for mature audiences. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. everybody it is episode 45 of the flick freak podcast your number one stop for all things film and television news facts and opinions i am one of your hosts andrew ormsby joined as always by the heartwarming and lovely shelby ammerman hey and the beard of the baratheon zach chadwick two weeks away from what game of thrones season five. Oh, <laughs> yeah thanks for being you know specific about that but uh yeah how's everybody doing today I'm doing, doing pretty right. well. I'm yeah. ready. I'm doing ready to take a nap, but that's because yeah. I accidentally took nighttime medicine. That's fine. Uh, Zach, thank you for showing up on time today. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I slept way too late. That's all right. We got a lot of uh, trailer reactions recorded. Uh, all right, let's just jump right into this thing with a "Did you see that opinion of the week?" I'm up. Oh, okay. And I saw the movie Cut Bank. Do you remember that was the uh, Liam Hemsworth, Teresa Palmer, Billy Bob Thornton movie where Liam Hemsworth was recording in a field and he saw the mailman get shot. Yeah, yeah. No. You didn't see I that trailer with that. us? I swear you did. It had uh, John Malkovich in it and uh, Bruce Dern. I don't remember it. Oh, it looks super it's cool. A, they were in the trailer. It was. Oh, like... I don't think actually, I don't think Zach was here that week. Oh, okay. Anywho, what this movie's about is Liam Hemsworth and Bruce Dern come up with this great idea where Bruce Stern, in real life, he's the mailman in this town in Montana, and they're going to fake his debt, fake his murder, so that uh, Liam Hemsworth can collect the $100,000 reward for giving evidence that he was murdered, like a give, like find evidence <coughs> to help catch the killer sort of thing. So they fake his murder, but then um, since uh, Bruce Stern plays the mailman, there's this package that was supposed to be delivered to this guy out in the woods who's played by uh, Michael Stolberg, and he plays this really, really creepy, psychotic dude. So he goes on this rampage to find out where his package is, and he just starts killing everybody. So that they could not have picked a worse time to uh, try and pull off this heist, or not heist really, but this Jesus mockery. Christ, man. But uh, yeah, Michael Stolberg plays this uh, guy named Derby Milton, who has these big... Coke bottle lens uh, glasses. Like the he, guy from tra- Trailer Park Boys? Exactly like that. Yeah, or uh, Milton from uh, Office Space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, he has this uh, stutter, and he just has this way of like looking through his glasses, and it's creepy as shit. He does a really good job. And Liam Hemsworth actually does a really good job, too. I'm not really his biggest fan, but I was surprised <laughs> by him. And, of course, Billy Bob Thornton, John Malkovich, and... Oliver Platt are amazing. So, hmm. but uh, it's directed by a uh, Mike Shackman, who gave us uh, a couple episodes of Always Sunny in Philadelphia, uh, Doctor House. He did uh, two episodes of Fargo, which is where he knew Billy Bob Thornton right. and Oliver Platt from. Oh, Oliver Platt's on um, that too. Mm, Oliver yeah. Platt, he's such a good actor. Yeah, man after my own heart, right there. The movie, like I said, it's a very good movie. There are parts of it where they could have cut corners to make it, like, an amazing movie. So it's definitely a see it, but it's not, like, a blow you out of the water like what the trailer made it seem. Okay. But it's still really good. So it's not, like, one that you're saying you need to see right now, but eh, if you're looking for something to watch, you should watch it. That's exactly it. Okay. That's exactly it. I'm with you. I'm with you. It was a good movie. All right. I might check it out. Zach. Probably I think it's time for the news. Okay. Give us the news. Um, the news. The news. news. <laughs> um, so it's been rumored for a while, but finally Disney's going to make Tron 3 with the director for Tron Legacy coming back. The important question, is Daft Punk going to do the soundtrack again? They certainly better, because, because that was the greatest movie soundtrack of I all didn't time. watch any of the Tron movies. Really? I've never seen you missed the, out. I haven't really been never that seen the original. Me. You never saw the original Tron? No, but I went and saw the Legacy in theaters Christmas Day when it came out. It didn't come out on Christmas Day, but it was like the week after. 
And I liked it. At the time, I thought it was a little dialogue heavy, but now that I've seen it again, I like it even more than I did the first time. I honestly think you're missing out, my friend, because the first Tron movie, it's dated graphically, but it's... I love it I've seen bits and pieces, but I've never seen the whole thing. It's like one of those movies that's on TV all the time, and you see like five minutes here and five minutes there. That's kind of one of those. What is even the premise of Tron? Okay, here's the premise of Tron. Um, It's pretty awesome. Yeah, Jeff Bridges, back when he was like really young, like Like 25 or something, something he is like one of the greatest arcade gamers in the world. And he, uh, no, I thought it was he. He was a programmer. He was a programmer, but okay. he's also like the greatest gamer okay, in the okay. world. And he works for this company. I wish I could remember the name of the company, but they're like high into like uh, electronics and programming and stuff like that. He accidentally gets transported into the computer world. Jeff Bridges does. Okay, and he has to find a way to escape and get back to his world because now that he's made it in all the video game like or not video game but the programs are trying to find their way into our world so he has to find a way to stop them right okay. and I really think, good movie i think so this and, sounds like a guy movie. isn't cillian murphy in the uh, legacy for like five he's a seconds? cameo yeah yeah i think he's gonna be in this one isn't there a movie called gamer with yeah there is actually yeah flynn, was, flynn industries Flynn, yeah, because uh, there's gamer with uh, Jeff Bridges' name was Flynn. Name. He was Kevin was Flynn. Flynn, right? Yeah. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Or what? Gerard Butler. Yes, thank you. And gamer. Wow, I could not. I was sitting here Never thinking of his it. face, and I was like, Machine Gun Preacher. You know, Michael C. Hall's in that as the villain. Yes, I knew that. I haven't seen that movie. Michael C. Hall. The is premise so is cool. I love Dexter so much. Dexter is one of the greatest shows of all time. I. I didn't grab it like you guys oh, did. I'm sorry. Oh, it's so good. All right, I anyway. I cried so hard. That is the thing. Out of all the movies and all the shows that made me cry, Dexter made me cry the hardest. Yeah. But uh, back to Tron. Oh, yeah. Tron is the name of the program that tries to help Jeff Bridges. And it's right. played by uh, Bruce Box Leitner. Um, that tries to help him? Yeah, help him out. So that's the only right, program. Because, he, he, because discovers- he, he created the program Tron. Like, he actually wrote the program Tron. And uh, when he gets in there, he finds Tron. Tron's like, oh, you're my creator. I'll help you out. He discovers okay. that there's actually, like, life in within virtual reality. Like, yeah. electrical currents are kind of like highways. And it's 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 crazy, but it's awesome. Well, that's definitely a... It was nominated crazy. for two Oscars. The original one was. It's good. For a sound and a so costume design. what you yeah. just told me was the original Tron? Yes. What's that's, Tron Legacy? That's the one where his son... Because he gets sucked into the virtual reality, and he he disappears, and he's gone for like 20 years. Yeah, and Jeff Bridges son, is gone. So, his son's the original Tron, he never gets out? No, he no. does, but then okay. he goes back. Oh, on purpose then. On purpose. I didn't think he ever got out. No, no, he got out in the original Tron, and then he decided to go back in. Oh, I didn't know that. I have never seen it, so. Okay. Yeah. And anyway, in the second one, his son goes in to get him. And it's Garrett Hedlund. Right. Who plays his son. Yes. I don't and then, think I know who that is. Have you seen Four Brothers? Yes. He's the kid that Jack. smokes. Jack? Yeah. He's Jack? Oh, I love him. Yeah, he plays Hook movie. in the Peter Pan in the yeah. Pan Pan. Him, yeah. It's a good movie. <laughs> I'm so excited to see Pan and I love him, and now that makes me want to watch Tron Legacy. All right, yeah. watch it later. You should. Oh, I'm, I um, think I'm going to have a Tron day. In comic book Michael movies. Sheen's in it in the Yeah, new Michael Tron. Sheen's in it. And I love Michael Sheen. Olivia He's the one Wilde, the very Twilight. sensual. Olivia yeah, Olivia Wilde. Wilde is gorgeous. Yeah, I don't Michael like Sheen's her. in. My... She plays thirteen in Dexter, right? Or not yeah, in Dexter in House. House. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I don't like her. But I don't think she's very pretty. Tron Legacy does have hands down the greatest soundtrack. Yeah, just, of any movie just, ever made. There's no debate. Or, or well, scored soundtrack. Then I might I have say. to have a Tron day. Yeah. yeah. Like I told you, you're gonna think the first Tron movie is beyond dated. You're gonna think it's ridiculous and just like. But Graphically, to... it doesn't hold up. But back in the day, it was like revolutionary. Yep. And I should yeah. keep an open mind about the... that. Yeah. Okay. Because when you get to Tron Legacy, the one that came out five years ago, it came out in 2010. Yeah. So five years ago. Yeah. I just started um, dating. That looks a lot better. Yeah. I remember the first time I saw the tr- the teaser for that one for Tron Legacy. It had the bikes. You know the Tron bikes. And Olivia Wilde in her sexy outfit. Mm. Yeah. Oh man. I just don't agree. All right. Anyway. 
Joe Manganiello, I think that's how you say his name, also known as Alcide in True Blood, yeah, is is probably going to play Deathstroke, which is the role Tom Hardy left in Suicide Squad. That's perfect because I love Tom Hardy too, but this guy has got some acting chops that I think the problem with him is is he's typecast in what? everything he ever does. What's he's always. I, Joe Wait, is he playing Joe Manganiello? Okay. Deathstroke or Deadshot? Deathstroke. Okay, because um, Manu Bennett, who plays uh, Slade Wilson in Arrow, yeah, looks just like Joe Manganiello. I've never seen. Um, I haven't seen, seen Arrow. I need to because I love Jack Barrowman. He's amazing. Arrow I started is watching so Arrow. I saw the first couple episodes of Arrow. What do you with, think? With that uh, guy that I was telling you about, Michael Compton. And I actually really liked it, except for he wouldn't stop talking. But <coughs> it was, I like really want to watch. That. I think the Flash is better. That's just my opinion. I, I honestly think I like Arrow more. Well, there's been more Arrow, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Joe Man Manginello. Joe Manginello. Yeah, him. He plays Magic Alcide. Mike. Alcide. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's big, 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 Dick Rich. Yeah. yeah, but uh, <laughs> best John, name ever. That's John funny. Barrowman is an Arrow, and that's, isn't it Jack Barrowman? I thought it was John Barrowman. It's John Barrowman. Oh, well, fuck me. Uh, the face of Bo in yeah, Doctor man, Who. Yeah, man, that guy's yeah. legit. He also plays in Vampire Diaries. He was in an episode of Scandal. And a couple episodes. he plays in New Girl. When I was watching Arrow, it... John like, Barrowman's in New Girl? Is that... It's the main character, right? Arrow? The, no, the Stephen no, Amell. Wrong guy. Then Steven I'm talking Arrow. about the guy who plays Arrow. He's uh, in New Girl. He is plays, he? Yeah, he's Cece's boyfriend. The one who's always on coke and just fucking is shit up. Is this a new one? No, in New Girl. The first season of New Girl. I don't remember this. I need to watch it. Okay, well, he's in it because he's CeCe's boyfriend. His name boyfriend. was Kyle. Shit, I did he not even know He was in two episodes. That That's went, awesome. The whole time he's, I love on, that he's show. drugged up. And that like, show's so funny. It really is hilarious. But he's also in Vampire Diaries as a werewolf. Huh. Speaking of funny yeah. shows... I'm midway through season three of Parks and Rec. That show's so good. I love Parks and You're Rec. So late I know to that. I'm so far oh. behind, but it's so funny. Amy Poehler, I love you. Aubrey I made my Plaza, sister watch that, and she was like, "Aubrey this Plaza is, stupid. is my so favorite you person on the show." Yeah, just about, yeah. except for she's redeemed herself in a few other ways. She's she's my, she's my favorite person on the show. The one that plays yeah. no Nick Offerman. April. See, I like Nick. or no no actually. I might actually like Andy Dwyer the most. See, I identify with him the most, but my favorite character is Aubrey Plaza and then Aziz. Because Aziz, (laughs) I think Aziz in scripted comedy is Uh, much better than his. Yeah, (laughs) Tom (laughs) Hanks. Tommy Fresh. But. But I, no, Chris Pratt and Audrey Plaza together are like the perfect thing. Yeah. They are the perfect couple because I just watched so the episode where they, so they got not. married. Yeah. Huh? They're so I great. just watched the episode where they got married. They're the perfect oh, yeah. couple. They're the perfect And I still couple. think it's just to see how much Ron free Swanson's stuff they can get. Ron Swanson's my favorite. Ron Swanson. Yeah, Nick Offerman is Ron no, Swanson. Yeah, the, Ron I watched Swanson, one period. last night. He doesn't too, even have a name that's where not he Ron like, Swanson. He banged his ex-wife. And then they got so into it that he got cornrows. He got the cornrows. That's one of the funniest <laughs> episodes in TV It really history. is good. And th- that's the woman that plays in Will and Grace as a... Uh, yeah. Yeah, We're, she um, cracks me that's up. That's actually his wife in real life. No way. Yeah. Is well, they really? They make a cute couple then. They, no um, shit. I love her. The best part about that episode is where like half of his mustache like in the middle is going up. Did you shave half your mustache? No. It, it burnt off, off from friction. Oh, God. <laughs> That's one of the funniest ass things I've ever heard in my that life. Show. All right, what's next? Um, Martin <laughs> Scorsese is going to direct the Mike Tyson biopic. Oh my! Starring God. Ja- uh, Jamie Fox. You know what's funny is I was actually thinking the other day it is long overdue for Mike Tyson to have his own biopic. Yeah, I guess. I'm a big boxing fan, <sighs> I mean, and I was like, his story needs to be told. That's probably the the perfect casting choice for it. Jamie Foxx is going ha- to have to get ripped as shit. He's that. already ripped as shit. No, he's have you like, seen the guy? He's, he's trim and he's fit, but he's not Mike Tyson beast mode fit. If I could yeah. have his abs, I'd take him. Jamie Foxx, I just I like him better in the roles where he's not as hands-on. He's more, It's more intelligence. Like when he outsmarts well, Gerard Butler in Law Abiding Criticism. I need to see that movie. It's so good. It's I've so heard it's good. pretty good. I so wanted to good. see it when so it came out. So intelligent is what it is. It's just smart. It's a smart movie. Uh, 
Well, there's nothing really. Because Tyson was about 220 whenever he fought, like, Holyfield and stuff. Well, I'm so. sure he's going to beef up for it. I mean, that's how these actors do it. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah, especially with how Matthew McConaughey usually looks and then how he slimmed down to, like, aid skinny for Dallas Buyers Club. He got, yeah. like, physically ill because of that movie. I can imagine. Just like um, Christian Bale did whenever he did The Machinist. I've heard that movie's terrible. It's not that great. I'd expect it's very overrated, I think. I expect Christian you mean Bale like to American have Psycho? been physically ill. No, over. American Psycho was beyond brilliant. No, it was good. It was not that good. I love American Psycho. Not Ooh. the best. All right. These are two news bits that I included, but they're really who gives a shit. And I really, I mean, why? Kevin Smith is going to do a Mallrats sequel. He's confirmed that. I wasn't why ever... the fuck did they wait 20 years to do a Mallrats sequel? I don't know. Because it's Kevin Smith. I love Kevin Smith. I know, he was too I... busy making Tusk. It's just that Kevin he's amazing. Kevin Smith is so he amazing. Can do it. But do why it. do you need a Mallrat sequel? Come up with some original shit. No, do that's another... original shit. That's all Kevin oh, Smith. Oh man, come on. And the the second one is in the same. Can we come up with some original shit? Jack Houston has signed to play. Eric Draven in the Crow remake slash Aww. reboot. Yeah, I'm not. This is a fucking movie that doesn't need a reboot, a remake, or anything. No. Just leave it alone. It's a classic. Yeah. Why do you need to redo the it? The Crow is the Crow, and you can't replace Brandon it's Lee. It's so that's just, good. That's just how it is. It's a good movie. You don't need to remake it. Why? Just so people can hate the remake and like the original Crow better. That's why. But, okay, Hollywood's bitching because for, I think, on the year, profits are down, or like, what is it, 10% or something? Ticket sales through this time last year are down. I know that uh, Insurgent's like 20% behind the original yeah. in oh, ticket wow. sales. It's still going to be number one. But they're bitching about ticket sales being down, but I think part of that is they're not coming out with anything original or new. Well, it's kind of like They're just remaking loose. everything. It's like remaking Footloose. You don't need to. Re- you don't need to remake something like that. No, all, you know what you, you know what you can do. Loose. You can repackage the movie instead of dancing. Do fucking waterboarding or painting or ballet or something. Put it in a different town. Update the times. Boom! There you go, Bob well, your uncle. In Footloose, they did update the times. They had fucking cell phones with texting. Oh, man. I That's just, the way the devil communicates. You don't need it, man. It's just... The Footloose was incredibly... And every time... Like, they'd say some of the same quotes, but they'd mess them up just a little bit, and I was like... <sighs> but speaking Sorry. of news about things that are getting remade in a good way, how about Joseph Gordon-Levitt getting cast in the Fraggle Rock movie? Fuck yeah! I don't even know what you guys are talking it's about. It's because you're, like, 14 years old. You don't get it. <laughs> <clears throat> also known as the movie I'll go see when it comes out. Exactly. It was like a Joseph- cheaper version of The Muppets. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Gordon, Joseph Levitt, I started watching Third Rock Sun for really the first time. Was it him or was it James Franco who had the episode of 30 Rock where he uh, was fucking the pillow? I think um, that's James Franco. Okay. That is James Not, Franco. Okay. Yes, I love Rock. that show. Not Third Rock from the Sun. Oh, Third Rock. Oh, when he was a like, little boy. Yeah, yeah. But he's actually yeah. the oldest alien. I had no idea. Really? I'd seen bits and pieces like in my childhood, I never could but my, get into they that were show. watching it. Oh, I was one of oh, my, that so was funny. my favorite show when I was growing up. I couldn't up. get into it. I want to watch it from the beginning to But end. Joseph Gordon Levitt can do anything. He he's yeah. a he's a jack of all trades. He's beautiful is See? what he is. Yeah. Um The Beauty and the Beast movie that keeps getting so much oh, hype God. coming out twenty seventeen. Yeah, you so got another wait. two years away. Yeah. Great. Maybe but they'll just shut it down by then. Why? I actually think this movie might kick ass. I don't want them to ruin my childhood favorite Disney. Movie. This is what Disney's going to do now. Disney's going to remake all of their animated movies into live action movies. Right, so they're ruining it's my childhood. It's fucking happening. The Lion they're ruining King. my childhood with Emma think about, Watson. No, think about it. They did it with Cinderella. The they're doing it with Beauty and the Beast. I guarantee you they're going to do an Aladdin remake. Cinderella looks I'd awesome. Watch an Aladdin Beauty and one. the Beast looks stupid. 
Why does it look? St- you just don't like Emma, Emma Watson. Watson. <laughs> the fuck is the wrong with you? You can't say it looks stupid. We we haven't even seen anything from it. Yeah, Emma Watson. I just know who's in it. Shit's gold. That's how great the she is. The three people that have been confirmed in there to be Emma people Watson in there, I me. hate except for one of them because, and he plays my least favorite character, Gaston. Yeah, so, Luke I Evans mean, is Gaston. Josh Gad is Gaston's buddy. Oh, he's then, okay. I'm gonna love him because Josh Gad's amazing, and, and that's then, the perfect. I don't know who the other guy is. But is I wish they pick a different girl. I'd even what? like Olivia Wilde better than oh my god Emma Watson. Emma Watson could come in here right now and slap me in the face, and I would say, please do that again because she touched me. Yeah, I'd probably be like, get the fuck out, out, leave. I don't want right. face. Oh man, A and E is making a live action Let the Right One In TV show. Yeah, I heard about this. Um, Not sure what to make of it. I haven't seen anything on it. Have you seen both movies? I have seen the Swedish version. I've seen the Swedish and I've have seen parts seen of the, the Ameri- American I've one. seen parts of the American, yeah. yeah. I don't know. The Swedish one's the great. The Swedish one's amazing. Yeah. But I just don't know how it's going to translate into a TV show. Sweden is very underrated when it comes to their movies. It really they make is. some good shit. They, they don't really get do. a lot of uh, pub, like, the foreign film nominees do in the Oscars. Yeah. Even though they consistently make good stuff. They made the original Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which is my favorite foreign film. Well, my second favorite foreign film. My... S- <clears throat> no, I don't know. Dude, the it's man up there. F- the Man from Nowhere. The best foreign film I've ever seen. Man from Nowhere is really good. That's a Korean or... I think it's Korean. Yeah. Uh, f- best foreign language movies, Pan's Labyrinth. That's a good one, too. I haven't seen it. Can't argue with that choice. No. Uh, okay. Uh, I got a bit of news. Do it. Uh, you watch Downton Abbey, don't you? I love Downton Abbey. It's awesome. But I didn't see... I've seen season one and season five. I didn't see two, three, or four. Mm-hmm. Well, you better hurry up because season six that's coming out is going to be the last season. Yeah. They're getting to that point because they're almost in the timeline. They're almost to World War Two. And that's when the aristocracy in England, old England, really just fell off. And and it's getting to that point. I mean, and Maggie Smith, her character in the show has got to be like fucking 180 years old. She is in real life. So. She's awesome, though. And that show really is exquisitely well made. Yeah. My mom said it was good. It's a, it's an excellent show. And you know what starts tomorrow? Mr. Selfridge Season 3. That movie I want to watch, or not movie, I want to watch a show called The Mom. Just Mom. Mom. Is that the yeah, one that with show. Anna Faris? Uh, and yeah, Alice I believe and Jeannie? so. Yes. Yes, it is. I, all I could think of is Alice things. and Janie. I've heard good things. I Except my seen mom it, fucking loves it. And I love Alice and Janie and everything. I would rather her play Beauty and Beauty and the Beast. And you know she's what? old. I bet if you met Emma Watson, you'd think she's the greatest person ever. You know, maybe if I did meet her, it would be different. It's just that I, I'm stuck on I'm stuck on her. We're never going to get to interview it. her now. Thanks a lot. Yeah, my <laughs> life has been ruined. <laughs> yeah, is that going to do it for the news? Deuces. All righty. <laughs> well, let's move on to the next segment of the podcast called Trailer Talk. We have one, two, Woo! three, four, five, six trailers to talk about today. The first one we're going to talk about is Pixels, directed by Christopher Columbus. No, not the real Christopher Columbus. This is an imposter. He's the guy who directed the Harry Potter movies, uh, Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets. Those are actually my least two favorite Harry Potter movies. Yeah, as with most too. everybody. Is Chamber of, the C- Chamber of Secrets the one with the Snake. serpent? The, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. one of my favorites, actually. I just don't... They're just... Compared to the newer movies, they... Uh, they obviously get it's better. It's because they're older. That yeah. It's the graphics. Wait you're, a you're, minute. You're able to relate to it that way. Um, he also directed Bicentennial Man. That was the Robin Williams movie. That's a good movie. And uh, it's written by Timothy Dowling, who did This Means War, Just yes. Go With It, and yes. Role Models. Yes. Wait a minute. Role Models is fucking hilarious. I, yeah, it's a God, great God, those are good movies. He has a good resume. I want to get Brian chocolate Brian Cox wasted. is in this? Let's... Yeah, I yes. want to get chocolate wasted. How about you wait till we get, get there, man? I want to get chocolate wasted. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this movie stars Adam Sandler, Josh Gad, Peter Dinklage, Michael, or Michelle Monaghan, Sean Bean, Kevin James, and Brian Cox. I didn't see Sean Bean or Brian Cox anywhere in that preview. They're not in the trailer, but they're in it. So you have two people from Game of Thrones, and then you have comedians. So um, right. Josh Gad is amazing in everything he's in. He is Besides really Frozen. funny. 
No, even in Frozen. Shut especially your fucking Frozen mouth. As <laughs> that old, movie's old. awesome. Oh my god. And then the internship. Oh, he's so good. He's so good. That was my first like real introduction to Josh Gad. <laughs> All right. Oh, my sister's in love with him. Pixels is about an alien race that discovers, um, like back in, was it the 70s? They sent a... 80s. Back in the 80s, they sent a time capsule into space. Yep. It was full of like different stuff and culture items from Earth. And aliens found it and they found some arcade games in there. And they thought it was a declaration of war. So what they did is they created all those old arcade games like Pac-Man and Donkey Kong, and they sent them to Earth to fight us. Yeah. So Adam Sandler, Josh Gad, Peter Dinklage, and a bunch of gamers Kevin have James. to get together. Yeah, Kevin James, they all have to get together to fight these I heard video somewhere games. that Kevin James is the president in this movie. Really? Yeah. I... He's the president of shitty actors. Whoa, He's whoa. great in King of Queens. I, I don't love like Kevin King James. The Paul Blart Mall Cop movies. Well, no, I'm not denying that. That those movies are terrible. Loved them. King of Queens is pretty good though. Loved it all. Yeah. Kevin James is amazing, especially that uh, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Also, that is a funny movie. Also, I made my sister watch this trailer. Um, almost as soon as we watched it, I texted her and said, this movie looks awesome. You have to watch this trailer. Watch it right now. And she texted me back and she goes, yes, it looks so good. It's probably going to be The only I'm good thing about lie. King of Queens is that Lee Ramini's in it and she is still hot even though she's oh, like man. 45. Dog walker, you know, have right? you seen her reality show that the wife? That's on the wife. Bravo? Oh. It's actually really good. And I hate reality TV. Yeah. Anyway, Pixels. I think it looks fucking hilarious. I oh, I want to see it, but I think it's going to be terrible. I'm gonna take my no, I think it's going to be great. It, and we're going to love it. All right. The next movie up is going to be the saddest movie of all time. It's called Max. It's directed and written by Boaz Yakin. He did Remember the Titans, The Punisher. And when I say The Punisher, I mean the 1982 Dolph Lundgren Punisher. Yes! Yeah. He also did The Rookie and Now You See Me. This guy has got a great name. Yeah. Oh, Boaz Yakin? Yeah. Uh, it stars... Robbie Amell, Thomas Hayden Church, and Lauren Graham. Thomas Hayden Lauren Church, Graham. amazing. If you've never seen Sideways, get on that shit. He's in a. Uh, I've never seen. In George of the Tombstone Jungle, Tombstone too. It is in Tombstone it's for a great movie. He gets the shit blown out. Oh, of him. it's a great movie. Anywho, Tombstone Max is, is about the after the Afghanistan War, a German shepherd who is stationed with um a marine Robbie unit. The, yeah, he uh finally gets sent home and he has it's about a german shepherd pretty much who has post traumatic stress disorder and the little brother takes care of him <laughs> yeah and the brother of the marine who died who was in charge of the dog has to take care of him now stateside and he has to try and help hope the german shepherd back to a uh, living a normal life and it looks sad as shit oh i cried during the trailer oh it looks so oh, sad oh i cried so but uh Hard. i will Not probably not see this movie just because I don't want to cry because animal movies get me more than anything really. I won't I, see it till it comes out on Netflix probably. I will see it because of course any movie that makes me cry I have to watch it. Yeah. That was the same thing with Fault in Our Stars. Very I knew it was gonna I knew it was gonna yeah. do it. I knew Fault in Our Stars was gonna make me cry and I still watched it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next uh, item up that we're gonna talk about is a new web series I don't even know if you can call it a web series. It's called Powers. It is based on the comic by uh, Brian Bendis. Um, Powers is going to be on PlayStation Network solely. That's the only place you can watch it. So if you have a PS3 or a PS4 and you're a PSN user, you can watch the show. Other than that, well, I take that back. If you have PS3 or P PS4 and it's hooked up to the internet, you can watch the pilot. But you have to be a network user to uh, <laughs> watch the entire series. And I'm not sure if it's going to be like Netflix where they just pop everything at once or if it's going to be like once a week they give you each episode. I don't know. I bet Shalto it's... Copley almost looked like David Tennant in the trailer. A little bit. I can see where like, you're going when with When I that. first saw that, I was like, is that David Tennant? I was like, no. no they would have said something about Doctor if they had yeah. done that. But uh, yeah, it stars Shalto Copley. It also stars Eddie Izzard, who is playing a role we've never seen him in before. I love that guy's freaking hilarious yeah, comedian. Yeah, he's pretty funny. Uh, also stars Noah Taylor and Susan Hayward. The plot of this is it takes place in an alternate reality where there are people with superpowers and normal people, and they coexist in the same world, 
and the people with superpowers are starting to go crazy. So Charlotte Copley plays a detective who had his powers taken away from him, and now he solely works on super-related cases. And Eddie Izzard plays this psychopath, it seems, with superpowers, and they keep him locked up like in this underground basement, it yeah. seems. It looks creepy as shit, and it looks great. <laughs> it I don't know. And it's, really not good, gonna, and it's definitely going to be rated R. User. It's going to be an a HBO Netflix style show where they don't hold anything back. There's going to be violence. There's Maybe gonna be it'll sex, be There's cool. going to be blood. I don't know. I'm going to check it out because I have a PS4. Yay me. And plus I'm not a P PlayStation user. I, uh, I have my Xbox One that I use for all gaming except for exclusives. Then I'll play that on my PS4. Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to buy a PS4. Yeah. The next movie up that we're going to talk about is called Good Kill. It's directed and written by Andrew Nichol. He did The Host, End Time, Lord of War, and Gattaca. The what Host is, is End good. Time? Is End Time the Justin Timberlake movie? Because that was a good movie. I think it is, yeah. Yeah. It was a really good movie. It was. It, this Good Kill stars January Jones, Ethan Hawke, and Zoe Kravitz. The plot of this is a man is conflicted by his job as a drone pilot. This looks way cool. It looks wicked as shit because uh, he used to be in Air Force like a a Top Gun. Well, I guess Top Gun's the Navy. But uh, he used to be an Air Force pilot. Right. And uh, now he's sitting in this air-conditioned shed piloting drones halfway across the world blowing people up that way. There was a really weird uh, part in the trailer where he's like buying groceries and he has his uh, Jag leather jacket on, and he uh, and the checkout clerk says, "So have you ever killed anybody?" He's like, "Yeah, I just killed sixteen Afghanistans earlier this morning. Now I'm going to go home and barbecue." And that's just a really, actually frightening way to look at the way war is. The it's way the perfect war is, line. The way wars are going to be fought in the future. Um, let's just put in there that he doesn't look happy about it. No, no, he, he is, looks very he's sad and distraught. He's conflicted by his new job when he's yeah. uh, when he's telling the clerk that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if it's because he because you know murder. This is going to sound really weird, but murder is very personal. So whenever mm -hmm. you take away that element, it could probably eat away at you. I'm assuming, like if you tr if. I don't know. Do you see it's, where I'm going with that? It seems like it seems more like a video game that has real life consequences exactly yeah. so it looks like a great movie and yeah. i definitely want to check it out i think murder even oh, personally sure. eats away at you well that's a very true murder Regardless, in general yeah. would eat away but i'm saying it's a very personal act so whenever you take away that human element to it and you just put it behind a screen then it becomes something totally different yeah uh the next movie that we're going to talk about is called paper towns it's directed by Jake Schreer, who did Robot and Frank, which is actually a pretty good movie. I haven't yep. seen it. Oh, it's and it's written by John Green, who is the author who gave us The Fault in Our Stars. Uh, this movie stars Cara so Delevingne, Nat Wolf, Halston Sage, and Austin Abrams. So apparently nobody in this has a normal name. No, not at all. Nat Wolf is an awesome name. Yeah, that it is really an awesome is. Name. Hmm. The plot is, is a young man's life is changed forever after he finally meets the girl next door. I guess he it's like he so met good. the girl like whenever they were like kids. They grew up going to the same school, but he never talked to her. And then one night he finally meets her when she sneaks into his room, and they have this he, crazy night. And they have tells a crazy him that night. I need your car. Yeah. yeah. So they have a fun night together, where, like go pranking people and stuff like that. And then she and then she apparently disappears. the kid, the main kid in this movie, was in the Fault in Our Stars. He was, was the he? blind kid, wasn't he? <gasps> he was the blind <clears throat> kid! Oh my god, I totally didn't even notice that. Yeah. I mean, oh, I he was my it, favorite in the Fault in Our Stars. That was my favorite character. Yeah. I love him. Oh, okay. this is going to be such a good movie. Anywho. Yay. Yes. So, the final movie that we're going to talk about <coughs> is going to be the funniest movie in the history of everything all time. It's called Laser Team. It's... Created by Rooster Teeth, so if you're listening to this podcast, there's a high probability you know who Laser Teeth or you know who Rooster Teeth is. And if you don't, get on it. Exactly. It's uh, directed by Matt Hollum, who's the CEO of Rooster Teeth. Written by Bernie Burns, who's the founder 
of Rooster Teeth. How does that work? Bernie's the founder, but he's not the CEO. He gave up a creative. He gave up a control because Matt Holm has more of a business degree, so he knows how to handle the company. Oh, more that makes that sense. Way. So he's like, so he's the CEO, but Bernie's like the chairman. Exactly. I got you. Matt Holm can still technically fire Bernie Burns, but never do that. Anywho, um, this movie stars Alan Richson, who is. I'll even say it. The guy's freaking gorgeous. He was a new girl. He was a new girl. He was in Blue Mountain State. He played a guy with a tiny penis that she was like going on a blind date with. And he was in Hunger Games yeah. too. Who? Alan Richson. Or he was in Catching Fire, I should say. He That's played, a good movie. Yeah. He was also in, I think he was in Immortals, or I'm not for sure. Alan Richson? Yeah. He was also in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the new one. He was Raphael. Yeah. It also stars pretty. also stars Colton Dunn, who was a long time ago Mad TV. Is that the black guy? Yeah. Who is Guys, he on Mad TV? I don't remember him on New Girl. Yeah. Huh. Anywho, it also stars Bernie Burns, Gavin Free, Michael Jones, and I think I saw Gus Sarola and Joel Heyman in there as well. <laughs> I was going to say, is Gus in this movie? He was... Okay, do you remember in the trailer where Gavin gets his head like put into the crotch of the scientist? That was Gus. That is awesome. Yeah. That's going to be so fucking... I want to hang out with Gus sometime. Some of his pictures make him look pretty, and some of them don't. The guy is ripped beyond everything. Yeah. I'll even say he's gorgeous. Uh, This What what Laser Team's about is an alien ship crashes into Earth, and four idiots find the wreckage, and in the wreckage they find a like four pieces of a suit. There's a helmet, there's boots, there's two different uh, gloves. One's a laser gun and the other's like this shield thing. Each of them put a specific piece of suit armor on and it gives them all special abilities. Like Colton Dunn can like run super fast and um, Alan can... Alan's a military guy who's like training them. Bernie Burns has the shield. Gavin Free has... The mask that can like heighten his vision and he can see through stuff. And Michael Jones has this laser gun for a hand. And they're just freaking idiots who have been given these special abilities from this suit. And they have to fight off this alien who's coming to Earth now after this crash. It looks so fucking funny. Yeah, it needs to be watched. I want to see this so bad. No, it's not flame retardant. <laughs> so they are flammable. <laughs> It will not retard flames. Are so, you saying we're going to catch on fire? Yeah, are you expecting <laughs> us to catch on fire? All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for trailer talk. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to move on to week three of the 2015 March Madness television show bracket. We are down to 16 teams. And after today, there will only be eight. Are you ready, you two, to I'm give your so votes ready. for yeah. each show? So... The first two shows going against each other. We have season three of House of Cards and Hannibal. I'm not for sure which season. I think it's season one. It's a completed season. So. Are you sure? I thought they were on season three. Are they? I'm not for sure. I don't fucking know. Anyway, what do you guys think? House um, of Cards or Hannibal? Man, it's it's sad because if, if I have seen Hannibal, I'd probably vote for it because... House of Cards third season. I've Pretty only, weak. I've only seen the first episode, and I have no desire to watch any of the rest of it. Yeah, I've uh, I haven't seen either one of these shows, but I would say Hannibal just because I've heard a lot of backlash on the last season of House of Cards. And the second season was amazing. Yeah, but it was one of the best oh, seasons. It won last year. Season two of House of Cards won the March Madness Television Show yeah. bracket of twenty fourteen. Yeah, duh. but I, I just, honestly don't think it's going to win this year, though. I have to say House of Cards simply because I haven't seen Hannibal. I've seen both, and I'm going to go House of Cards. So, I just don't, so House of Cards is going to move on to the Elite Eight. The next two shows going up against each other are Louis, the Louis C.K. show, and The Leftovers, the show <laughs> on HBO. The Leftovers is the greatest show I've seen that I have no idea what's going on. Oh, yeah? Like, you watch the show, and you're like, this is amazing, but I have no idea what the fuck is going on. Uh, None of this makes that sense. That sounds terrible. 
Christopher Eccleston's in it. Doctor <gasps> Who. He's awesome. I need to watch that then. <clears throat> I haven't yeah. seen him in anything else ever, and he's my favorite Doctor Who. I don't care what people say about David Tennant. He is an American in this. Just I think so you know. Peter Capaldi's badass. Uh, just... I haven't seen that one yet. I haven't, I haven't even gotten to Matt Smith. Neither I'm either. in David Tennant. Do you guys know what The Leftovers is about? No. Yeah, 2% of the world's population just disappears, yeah. and it's all about everybody else dealing with it. Yeah. And it's not like it's the rapture. Just 2% of the random population of the Earth disappear. Like, the Pope disappears, and they're like, okay, it's rapture. But Gary Busey disappears, and like, yeah. and just like random people disappear, like murderers, rapists, they disappear. Yeah. Babies disappear. Just 2% of the world yeah. is gone. And it's a couple years after everybody's gone, and people are going, Crazy. they're kind of getting back to normal, but there's this cult that's going around. of People just dressed in white, they stand in front of your house, stare at you, they don't speak, they never speak, no matter what. And they just stare at you, and they chain smoke cigarettes. And everybody's like, who the fuck are these people? I can't watch this movie, then. It's a TV show. show. Yeah. I can't watch this show, then. Yeah, it's... Because I'm a smoker, mm-hmm. and when I see people in shows smoke, it gets me. I have no desire to watch <laughs> and it. And I will not be chain smoking to... It's a great show. I love it. <laughs> but honestly, like I said, I have no idea what's going on. What's so, the other one? Louis. Louis, which Louis. is one of the funniest shows of all time. Yeah, I'm Louis, with Louis. great in everything he does. Okay, so... You're voting for Louis, Zach? Yeah, Shelby. I have Louis. To. I'm going to vote for Leftovers, but I'm outnumbered here. So Louis is moving on to the Elite Eight. All right, the next two shows up. The final season of Sons of Anarchy and season one of The Blacklist. Sons of Anarchy. Um, All day. Last season was I pretty bad. I love the Sons of Anarchy. It was bad. It was really it's good. It's such a good show, but that last season was so weak. I don't feel like it was. When I felt it, like it ended, ended. I felt like it ended the exact way that it needed to end. That it should. Yeah, have ended. but I quit it giving a shit perfectly. two episodes in. Really? Well, then you I didn't... really did. I quit giving a shit. They could have cut half that season and it would have been miles better. I don't think so. There was I think so what much happened needed. There to was happen. so much juxtaposition of just shit going on just to show you that it was going on. Everything had no to happen point. so that way the end even made sense. Uh, that like the whole season had you could have moved up to... you could have moved up the reveal of him finding out about what he found out about because you haven't seen it yeah i've seen half had... of it and i gave up i don't yeah, think so it's, it's... i don't think you i don't think they could have moved that up because he needed so he needed juice for certain things so he couldn't there's no way he could have found well, that out because he had to I things had say, to happen. And and I know I've happened. seen most of the first season of The Blacklist. It's a really strong show. I love that show so and much. And so I would say Sons that show was better than Sons of Anarchy. So that you're is, voting for Sons of Anarchy I'm and you're so voting for the Blacklist. For so it Anarchy. comes down to me. I, I am voting for you, The Blacklist. You haven't even seen Sons of Anarchy. Yes, I have. I've seen the, the last season. Half of it. I'm just and saying. And I gave up. Like I wasn't into it. I love that show. I remember the day of the night before my wedding. I watched two episodes of that show because I was not gonna wait. And and man, I'm telling you, halfway through the season, I'm like, I just don't care. It so, had to happen. The blacklist moves on to the elite eight. Next up on the list, we have The Walking Dead going up against Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time. You're voting Once Upon a Time. Yeah, please, God, <sighs> shoot me in the face if Walking Dead wins. Zach that is the person. worst show in the world. Um, I, I know I said what I said earlier, but I might change my mind. Um, Based on, remember, this is season four of The Walking I Dead, know, the greatest only, season of that show. I don't think so. I it's still maintain, show. besides this current season that's happening that's really strong, that the first season is still the best one. Because um, the first season was so revolutionary. Well, from yeah, what but you've seen on TV. Th- those episodes with the, at the CDC with the doctor are still great. And the second season was good too, but the third was just meh. Um, now this had like the, the look at the flowers episode. I didn't see that. I had zero. I mean, that's powerful shit. That is beyond um, intense. It's this Terrible episode, show. this season of Once Upon a Time that we're talking about. Is it the one with Elsa and Frozen? Yeah. Okay. That's right. Because this is a new season they're in now. Mm-hmm. Oh man! I probably would say even with that, I I have to say The Walking Dead just oh, because God, I love I like Once Upon a Time a lot, me. but I think overall Walking Dead had 
more moments that stuck with me. Yeah. And I'm gonna vote for The Walking Dead too because that was a Jesus very very powerful Christ. season. So The Walking this Dead is even better, on. man. You need to watch it. I swear oh, I'm, I'm getting. Co- I'm, I'm halfway through everything. the half season, so I just have so many shows to watch. I just finished the most recent episode. So it's it's insane. That yeah, show. it's great. All right, so The Walking Dead is going to move on to the Elite Eight. So that is going to do it for the West. Now let's move on to the East bracket. We have Game of Thrones going up against Modern Family. So this is season six of Modern Family, I think, mm-hmm. is the complete one, and then season four of Game of Thrones, which I which I still hold is the weakest. I still think season two is the weakest. So, but in order, I think it goes season one, three, four, and two. All right, Shelby. I haven't seen either of them, but I'm. I'm not in any way interested in either of them, but I would rather watch Modern Family than Game of Thrones, so I'm going to go with that. <coughs> Modern <coughs> Family? Zach. Well, you already know what I'm going to say, so... You're going to vote for Game of Thrones all day. Well, yeah, I mean, I think overall the last season was still better than than what I watched of Modern Family, but I didn't stick with Modern Family like I normally do. I haven't even seen any episodes of Modern Family, and I'm more likely to watch that. See, you can't Thrones. cast a vote if you haven't even seen either of the shows. I did on the first one, otherwise... That's hog shit. Otherwise, that first bracket didn't matter either. That's fine. I understand. You guys hate me. There was only one good episode in last season of Game of Thrones, and that was the Mountain vs. the Viper episode. No, I... I or the episode where Tyrion's trial, episode. where he goes ape shit and he gives one of the best performances what about, ever. Um, I thought the wedding episode in episode two was great, or the episode at, where at the end Arya and the Hound, he's like, "I'm gonna eat all these fucking chickens," and they just kill a bunch of people in a bar. That was badass. Well, yeah. After Gone Girl, I think any scene with marriage, Andrew doesn't care about it. Yeah, but yeah, was somebody. <laughs> Oh, never mind. I think Red Wedding was more be- brutal than Gone Girl. I haven't seen that. <laughs> it's Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah. Oh. But, uh, watch it. I am going to surprise it. everybody here. I'm going to vote for Modern Family. Thank you. Because this is the season where Mitch and Cam finally get married. And that's the gay couple, right? Yeah. I read an article about them, and oh, it's so cute. One of them, one of them is really gay, and the other one's not. Yeah, Jesse, Ty- Jesse Tyler mm-hmm. Ferguson is actually gay in real life, and uh, they got a lot of heat for their their couple on TV being too like stereotypical, like from the gay community, and they're very angry with them. And then the oh, redhead shit. was like, "I'm, you know, I'm gay in real life, and I don't feel like this is in any way." Yeah. Uh, yeah, if he doesn't have a way. problem with it, then they can just go jump in the lake. Yeah, that was the article I read. Anyway, yep. Yeah, so, actually, surprisingly, Game of Thrones are getting knocked out oh, in I Sweet totally 16. Get it. It, is, it was an overall week. I bet a lot of people did not see that coming. Yeah, you know. So. Well, guess what? You should have voted more on YouTube and Twitter. So, that's on you, listeners. So, next up, we have Parks and Recreation versus Archer. Parks and Rec. I have to go with Archer because I've seen more of this of this recent season. I haven't seen any of Parks and Recreation. It's the final season of Parks and Recreation. All right, it's one of the I'm funniest, midway through so I'm voting three, for Parks though, and Rec. So I'm getting there. Parks and Rec is going to move forward. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. I get it. I totally get it. All right. Next up, we have Fargo going up against Orange is the New Black. Orange is the New Black. I have zero opinion on either one of these shows. Right. But I guess I would pick Fargo because I know a lot of people love that show. It's one of the best miniseries I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And I'm going to vote for Fargo. And I love Orange is the New Black. Season 2 was great. But it honestly, it does not it does not hold a candle. You know, by the time we get to the actual part where it's this or that, I'm not going to know either one of the shows. Yeah, you will. Yeah. So. You guys are knocking out all the shows I know already. Uh-huh. All right, so Fargo's going to move on to the Elite Eight. You know what that means? You just got to go watch them. Boom. Yeah. What if I have absolutely no interest in them? Well, then you can find a new podcast to be on. Hey, oh. Snap! That's how I roll. 
Well, then you have two people to replace. Good luck, Andrew. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. So next up, we have Silicon Valley going up against Brooklyn Nine-Nine. This is actually the hardest pick for me because they are two freaking <laughs> hilarious shows. Me as well. There's For Silicon Valley, the episode where they try to find out how many dicks they can jerk off in a room full of 400 guys in 10 how, minutes. In 10 minutes is one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. I was crying. I well, was the whole season so was hilarious. Yeah, but I'm saying that part in particular yeah. stands out. And Brooklyn Nine Nine, the captain, is one of the funniest characters on TV. Yeah, I love Chelsea Peretti and I like uh, Terry Crews in that show. Yeah, the whole the whole cast is really good. I didn't know if that show would last, but it's it's going to last at least through three seasons. Yeah, Chelsea Peretti plays a Gina. I don't know why. I think she's so hot. I I don't know about hot. I think she's just great. But Andre Brower as captain. He, you know, I I read an interview and he said he doesn't understand why people think he's so funny. Really? Yeah, he doesn't get it. That's that's perfect. That makes it even better. That makes it even better. But uh, Andy Samberg is, you know, I thought he was going to be when I heard this show was coming on. I'm like, as this is going to be the dumbest thing ever. One of the funniest shows on TV. You know, he is... I'm not counting the t- the late night host, because that's not uh, scripted TV. But he's probably the most successful jump from Saturday Night Live to scripted TV. Oh, scripted TV. Okay. Yeah, to gonna... scripted TV. Okay, I was going to say, to like stardom? No, that's got to be Will Ferrell. To script... Or Steve Martin. Or Chevy Chase. Or Chevy... No, not Chevy Chase. Why? Chevy Chase broke hard... Yeah, but he's in some classic legendary movies. Well, he is, but he's not like Steve Martin. Well, no. Okay, so what do you guys vote for? Silicon Valley or Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Silicon Valley. I haven't seen either one of them. Yeah, probably Silicon Valley because that movie, that that. show's so funny. I'm going to vote for Brooklyn Nine-Nine just so it has a vote because it deserves a vote. Yeah. So, these are the Elite Eight finalists. We have House of Cards. Louis, The Blacklist, The Walking Dead, Modern Family, Parks and Recreation, Fargo, and Silicon Valley. I only know two of those this, shows. This oh. one's a lot, lot more comedy than last time. Yeah, comedy's got knocked out quick last yeah. year. Well, last year you had True Detective and Game of Thrones Season 3 and House of Cards Season 2 and... You know, so on, so yeah, on. we have four comedies, so half yeah. of the list is comedies. That's great. I love that. I really do. Oh, I'm all about it. That means that we're getting higher quality comedies. Yep. So, all right. Um, the last segment of the podcast, we're not going to do IMDb, it's while we're doing March Madness. Shelby, would you be so kind as to tell people what they can see in theaters in this week's version of the Fair Baron Forecast? Uh, you can go watch Insurgent, which you better go watch Insurgent, especially if you saw Divergent. Um, The Gunman. Oh, that's yeah. the one with Sean Penn. Yeah, yes. and, and it, I, I actually do want to see it. I do too. It's it's even Luke... though it's with Sean Penn. I don't have a problem with Sean even Penn, even though it's taken with it just, Sean Penn. It just seems it is taken with Sean. It's Penn. Luke Besson. He's the guy who made Taken. He's the guy that made Taken. <laughs> But it's got Idris Elba and Javier Bardem in it, so... That's the main reason why I'm going to see it. Yeah, definitely. Is Brian Cox... And Ray Winstone. Ray no, Winstone. Ray Winst- it was I Ray love Winstone. that guy. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a movie for the more religious people called Do You Believe? It's about when a pastor is Do shaken by believe? the visible faith of a street Pass. corner preacher. He is reminded that true belief always requires action. Pass. Um, then there's Kumiko, the treasure hunter. Ooh, I want to see that really bad. That's about the Japanese woman who saw Fargo yeah. yep. and thought it was based on a real thing. Yep. So she died in the cold Arctic North. Yep. The the IMDb, it's called The Buzz. It says, almost 20 years later, and we're still talking about Fargo. For good reason. The current TV show is a startling wonder. And now we get to watch R- Rinko Kikuchi. She was in Bring to Babel. Life, one of the oddest true stories ever that's related a great to a movie. film. If you've seen Babel, she was the deaf Japanese girl. God damn, that's a great movie. It was a really freaking good movie. Brad Pitt. You know, I don't... Did, did I realize that this was a true story when we watched the trailer? It's based no. on an urban legend. Okay. No, so. 
Because it says, bring to life one of the oddest true stories ever related to a film. <coughs> Anyways. And then there's Danny Collins, which is about an aging rock star deciding to change his life when he discovers a 40-year-old letter written to him by John Lennon. Oh. Whoa, cool. Um, There's one called Spring, which... Yesterday was the first day of spring, so hey. this would be a great movie to go watch. Timing. Speaking um, of spring, you know how many fucking frisbee golfers were out there today? <laughs> oh, outside the park outside Jesus my house. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's, it's a frisbee golf park. That's what it is. I know, it's but like I've Tom never Walking's seen park. so many frisbee golfers yeah. ever. Frolfers. Frolfers, that's what it is. Yeah. No, um, they go hardcore on that shit out I'd there. Say, fuck, Spring man. is about a young man in a personal tailspin flees the United States to Italy, where he sparks up a romance with a woman harboring a dark primordial secret. Ugh. Um, yeah, that doesn't... That kind of sounds like a Gone Girl movie right there. <laughs> um, can't Stand Losing You, Surviving the Police, which is about... based on. It's based on the memoir One Train Later by guitarist Andy Summers. Can't Stand Losing You... Surviving the Police tells of the rise of the worst that band in the world. That sounds awesome. Wow. I hate Sting. What the fuck is I wrong hate with you? The Sting's police voice. Rule. Sting's voice is the most annoying noise I have ever heard in my life. I watched Roxanne. Mulan. I, I watched Mulan Rouge. Rule. I watched Mulan Rouge yeah, and I heard the song Roxanne for the first time. Light. And I was like, man, I love this song, and I love that man's voice. It was the... It Ewan was the, McGregor? Ewan McGregor, No, yeah. not Ian McGregor. The, the... The raspier voice guy? Yeah, the one that kept falling asleep. He's, he has narcolepsy. He's a narcoleptic remember. Russian or whatever. I don't yeah. remember. Well, great, beautiful, deep, scratchy voice. It's and actually then, like a thousand times better than Sting's version. It really is. Stand. And then I saw... And then I was in the car, and I was listening. Like, it came on the radio, and it was the police. I was like... Who the fuck is like? This is the worst oh my person God. I've I ever heard. My mom goes, talking to anymore. My mom goes, Sendin they're the original singers. S-O-S. And I was like, I hate that song. Sendin out an SOS. I love that song. Fuck you. God. Sorry. I just hate the police. I hate that song oh too. I just God. hate the police. But anyways, in theaters right now, the, those came out yesterday, March twentieth, and then also in theaters right now is Cinderella, which I need to go see. Run all night. Kingsman, The Secret Surface, which I also need to go see. God, that movie it. fucking this, rules. Is that awesome? Best movie of the year. I really, Best really, 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 really want to see I've it. I've seen so it far. twice. Um, Have you really? I took my brother to go see it. Jesus. He loved it. The second best exotic Marigold, Marigold Hotel. That's the... Um, Helen with Mirren. Helen, Helen uh, Mirren. Maggie Smith. No, no. It has Maggie Smith, uh, Judy Dench, oh. and Dev Patel. Yep. Okay. Uh, then there's Chappie. That's the one with Charlotte. Charlotte I want to see it. It's not getting that great of reviews, but I still want to see it. Um, yeah, I do too. Then there's Focus with Will Smith. And there's the SpongeBob movie, Sponge Out of Water. Oh, I'm there. McFarland, USA. Fifty no. Shades of Grey. Jesus, get out of McFarland, the McFarland, is that the one? And Unfinished Business. Is that the movie where Josh Lucas is like the guy who... No, McFarland, no, Kevin USA Costner. is the one that has Kevin Costner uh, where he's like mind. teaching the kids how to run cross yep. country. A cross country never coach mind. in a small Forget California that. town transforms a team of That's athletes what into Kevin championship relegated contenders. To nowadays. Making Disney... Sports pro- movies. There you what go. was that movie where he was the uh, owner of the Cleveland Browns during the... Draft uh, day. Draft day. That looks so stupid. Apparently it was actually good. It's, it's like a knockoff of Moneyball, which is actually like one of the few... Baseball movies I like. Trouble with the Curve is awesome. Um, I I think that's Kevin Costner. Got- Swing Vote? Yeah, Kevin Costner? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that movie. Uh, All Mr. right. Mr. Brooks is good. Surprisingly not terrible. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. That was like his comeback. Is that it? And that's it? I believe so. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for episode 45 of the Flick Freak podcast. Thank you to everybody for watching. If you'd like to follow us on any of these on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, you can find us at forward slash Flick Freaks. You know how long I've waited to say that to where I can say, you know, oh, you can find us on Facebook at forward slash The Flick Freaks, on Twitter at Flick underscore Freak underscore S, or you can find us on YouTube at forward slash XG2YMKZWR. You know how great it is to finally just say Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, forward slash Flick Freaks. Yeah, it's no, the greatest I mean, feeling in the world. Now you Good. Don't have, it, it made my day. For it. Good. And coming soon, flickfreaks.com. Woohoo. So, 
Thank you again for watching. If you'd like to follow us on Podomatic, you can find us there, because that's where all of our great content that gets delivered directly to iTunes can be found. And until episode 46, or one of our trailer reactions, we'll see you guys next time. Peace out! Later! Goodbye.